Hey, welcome to Hanyak Honeybees. Today, we're trying something. We have queen cells. You can see, here's one here. And we are on plastic foundation, so we can't cut these out. Let you see that. Are you zooming in? Okay. And then, I think we had another one up here. So, we have more than one for sure. Some of these are starting to... They're thinning a little bit on the end, so I don't think they're too much longer and they will be hatching out. So, we work full-time jobs. Most people do. You're not in your bee yard as much as you'd like. So I can't check these all the time. So what we made was these little queen cell caps. And we basically cut a little piece of 1 8 inch hardware cloth. And I made an inch and a quarter hole and I drilled it all the way through a two by four. And then I took a small hammer handle or a broomstick, whatever, the right appropriate size. And I kind of drive that flat piece of hardware cloth down into that hole. And then you just trim off the, the, the uh, tags and stuff to where it basically is like that. It's about, oh, three quarters of an inch from side to side. And then what we're gonna do Come on over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this in around our cell. So if a queen hatches, she can't get out. But she'll be inside of that. So when I come home from work, I can check these and then she's hatched out that day. She'll be fine. And then we can put her into a queenless hive or there's a multiple things we can do. And then if let's say this cell over here hatched out, and took off running around the hive, well, it can't get to this one to cut it down and, and kill your queen there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and push this in. They go in so easy. These are very cheap, you just do it yourself. I think this stuff costs like a dollar 25 per foot and then the rolls are three foot wide, so you can make a bunch of these for less than a dollar. And then this one's starting to get thin on the end. What we're going to do too is we're going to leave one cell unprotected. There's another one above it there. Now we've got two different sizes. We have this one, it was an inch and a quarter. And then I cut another hole that was an inch and five eighths. Sometimes you get in your boxes and they've drawn out two or three real close together and they have several locations. So we made some larger ones that you could put over like several cells at once. And if it hatches out, she cuts down the other two, so be it, you didn't lose everything. Sometimes you have a frame that may have 15 cells on it. But these are just little singles, so this is gonna work very well. This one looks like it's thinning more than the others. I'm gonna let it go and cage this one. And I try to like put it more towards the top, I guess. That way there's room for it to crawl out. I'm sure they'll get out when they want to, so. And they stick out a little ways from the frame, so you need to give a little bit more space if you can see right down along there with the camera. I don't think I pushed that all the way to the to the foundation. Let me try that. I just didn't want to get it too tight to the cell, but there appears to be plenty of room. If you can see that, so. We're excited about trying these and we'll let you know our results. But we have three protected and one that's free to hatch out anytime she wants and run around but she can't get to her sisters now when you put them back in the rule of thumb or finger is a finger width and you can see they're not tight like you normally keep them here when you do that that gets too too close together and Sometimes the bees like to draw 
from the cell over to the next frame and then when you pull the frames apart it rips the cell open it kind of ruins everything so just set them and just push it over to where it's about one finger width just like that because like, I got cells on both sides I got to do it on both sides and then bring that over and it's good to go thanks for watching Hanyak honeybees Hanyak